Whoa, she is absolutely massive. So here's her next to my hand. What's up guys, YT Exotics here. Since I was a kid, I had this dream. Basically, I wanted the biggest tarantula that I could possibly own. And that was the Goliath bird eater and any of the tarantulas from the new world climates of the world. And those tarantulas kick off urticating hairs. So this was one of my primary motivators for wanting to take one of the old world spiders. As you can see, the, the titular spider in this picture here, the Hercules baboon spider, known for being one of the biggest, um, fueled a passion in me to actually start trying to selectively breed my own adaption of a species of tarantula by focusing on giant genes. In selective breeding, the principles are basically to take the biggest to the biggest and then breed those together to key out giant genes in the resulting offspring. And you can do this over generations. It's been done with a lot of things. Actually, recently the uh, Pepper X chili pepper has been selectively bred down and down the lines to create something that is much hotter than the original parent species. Now back to the Histocratis Hercules, which deserves a video in its own right for being an absolutely humongous old world spider. There's only one specimen known and it's held in the British National History Museum, but this deserves a video in its own right and I will do that at some point. This also served a huge part of my passion. This spider was reported to have gotten to about 10 to 11 inches in leg span and the actual spider fell short of that at around 8 inches, but still a massive old world spider. So that fueled part of the passion. Brief mention and thanks to Paul O'Sullivan for some of the imagery used here, but you can see the spider came from Jeba in Nigeria and there is only one specimen known, but these motivators were enough to actually fuel a full scale project and here's the result. So I started this project in 2011 and I had a huge eight inch uh, female gigas. People that watch my channel will know that I was showing a lot of videos on her. I also ended up getting a, it was supposed to be a, a Hercules, but it was, I'm guessing a gigas. And its final mole ended up being seven inches, which was very large for the species, um, for a male, and it had a big carapace. So I ended up line breeding down, and I'm about generation four. So here's her next to my hand. And yeah, clearly she's uh, over eight inches. I'm not entirely sure how big she is, but she's a very, very big girl. This is the product of selective breeding. This girl is one of the biggest I've got. She is absolutely enormous, over eight inches probably closing on nine inches and uh, I've been at this for well since 2011 I've been selectively breeding spiders in the hopes to actually create a spider in the old world variety that actually rivals a goliath bird eater and that's because primarily I'm itchy to the urticating hairs but also just how cool would it be to have a spider that doesn't ever lose its its hair on its abdomen and always looks kind of fresh until they're you know like last month of pre-mold then they always do look a bit tatty but yeah this girl is absolutely friggin enormous so so as big as she is guys what's more impressive is i had a huge seven and a third inch male shed um he's dead now but he i will i'll pull up the pictures on the screen He was uh, paired to this female and my largest females, not that female, that was the old one that used to start the project. Um, but this guy here was the male. And as you can see, looking at his legs, but that's just the male guys. So the female's even bigger than that. And you see, I've labeled it there, selectively bred from Africa, Histocratis species Goliath. That's what I'm calling these because I want to keep them separate. And that is so that the genes don't get bred back into the regular Histocrates genus genes. And uh, that way, then we can all work together and effectively line breeding these. But yeah, so here's the um, one of the biggest slings. This one is around two inches, but there's some, they vary from around an inch 0.3 to an inch and a half to two inches. They vary around that sort of range, but this was one of the bigger ones. And uh, What's really exciting, guys, is this is the first time I've seriously, seriously had some big specimens selectively breed. I had some very big ones with the start of the project, a seven inch male who had a big body, by the way. That's why these slings have sort of taken after that. And an eight inch female, the one I just showed you. But now it's, you know, it's gone to eight and a half to nine inches to a seven and a third inch male. So yeah, look at the, look at the sling. So as I've been breeding these guys for a long time, 
four generations to be exact. I know that these are unusual in their size. They've actually grown to this huge size in only a couple of months. So I do have a lot of these available guys, especially if you're in the UK and you want to get one and take a gamble. You know, as I said, it's a community project, really. I want to get people involved and we want to just sort of like line breed to get the biggest old world baboon spiders that we can. But yeah, I'm selling them at regular price, same as a normal Gigas, and I just want to get them out there. It's not about money, it's about just creating something amazing and cool and unique. So I've got a lot of passion for this project. I've been doing it for, well, since 2011, so nigh on 15 years now. And uh, yeah, I will be posting updates to this channel on these slings. And if you're in the US or outside of Europe, I may end up sending them to you as well. Just sort of get hold of me on the Facebook group. Um, on the on the Facebook Messenger, and I'll get back to you. But yeah, there you go, guys.